Hello everyone, I'm Alan Partridge, Adobe eLearning Evangelist. Today I want to talk about advanced question feedback on multiple choice questions. Let's take a look quick like here at the project that we'll be working with today. Some cool animation effects here in this project. The reason that a hot air balloon rises is that the air inside the balloon is warmer than the air outside. The height of the balloon is controlled by adding or releasing hot air. To add air, gas kept in tanks in the basket is heated and the resulting hot air is expelled into the open chamber of the balloon. To remove hot air, a flap on the top is opened by the pilot in the basket below. This allows cooler air to fill the balloon and causes it to sink lower. At this point, then, the user, of course, clicks on the slide to continue and finds their first multiple choice question. Now, this multiple choice question has been augmented so that each of the answers, whether correct or incorrect, actually has a feedback associated with it. How do you make the balloon rise? Well, if I said, I like carrots, which makes no sense at all, and then submit, I'll immediately get a response, I like better answers. I might try a more legitimate answer. Now, it's important to note that here, in this case, I've set the number of attempts to infinite. So I've given the user as many tries as they want. So they can submit another incorrect answer, and they'll be given information that says sort of, you know, are you sure? So it will give you the opportunity uh, as the trainer, as the educator, to provide feedback to the user that can begin to give them additional educational information in the event that they choose wrong answers, or even provide more information in the event that they choose correct answers. So here, fill, fill the balloon with hot air. We know from our uh, initial animation is the right answer, so we'll click Submit, and you can see, well done, click anywhere. I'm able to click anywhere on the screen then and, con and continue just like I would with a regular Captivate question for multiple choice question. Now here I've configured it slightly differently. You'll see here that I've set the attempts to one, okay? And in this case, I made it so that the correct answer, which is gas tanks, does not have a feedback element on it. Therefore, when you choose correct answer gas tanks, you're able to actually get a feedback that's the direct feedback for the correct answer, right? In the event that you chose the advanced feedback for the correct answer, then the only feedback opportunity you get is the advanced feedback opportunity, okay? So it, it sort of replaces or fills in for. And we'll take a look at how that works here in a second. So let's just, we'll give it a wrong answer. We'll say army tanks, um, which clearly is the wrong answer. We'll submit, and immediately we get the feedback. Now here you see, I've formatted the feedback differently incorrect. I think that sort of tank would prove too heavy for the balloons. But ultimately, it's just a caption. It's a text caption, same as the other one was. It's in a different location, in a, in a text bubble instead of being transparent text, but it's still the same basic approach. So when you're all done, you can click Submit and then automatically go and see your score. Here again, you'll see that I've done some formatting to make the score a different font and, and that sort of thing, but ultimately it's just the default uh, behaviors that come directly with Captivate. So if I wanted to, I could go back and review those quiz results. I could see what those results were, see where I answered it correctly or incorrectly, and I could also see what the correct answer was in the event that I had done it incorrectly. So all of those things continue to function normally, even though I have feedback for each of those individual responses. This works with multiple choice questions, so it's pretty cool uh, and nice opportunity to do that kind of work. So let's take a look at exactly how that's configured inside of Captivate. So we did the initial animation. I dropped a bunch of effects on the animations to make the sort of arrow spins and color fades and that sort of thing. Let's take a look at the slides themselves. I'm going to open the property inspector over here so that we can actually see the properties. Now, we're not concerned as much with the quiz properties as we are with the properties properties. So notice what happens when I select the properties and then I select this answer, right? Fill the balloon with cold air. Immediately we'll notice something different. And that something different is that one of these accordion menu options is actually an advanced answer option. So that advanced answer option is automatically going to be linked to a caption, to a text caption down below. I check advanced answer option, then I choose what action I want to occur when that answer is selected, in my case no action, and then show the feedback message or don't show the feedback message, and that'll allow you to put it there. You can format that feedback message in any way that you want. There's a separate one for each one of the answers. You'll notice this one is the correct answer, and I choose go to next slide on the correct answer. All right, so I choose that as my primary tactic there. On the other slide, I've chosen a different configuration. Let's just go back here quick to the first slide. I just want to show you in the quiz properties, you can see here that I have set up the quiz properties so that 
in the case of this particular slide, we have set the number of attempts to infinite. Okay, so infinite attempts in the first slide. Now let's go to the second slide. The second slide is a little more complex to look at. Let's take a look at what's going on here. So I've got my answers here. The first answer, we'll notice in the properties inspector, I have not turned on the advanced answer option. Instead, I've left it as the correct answer and I'm using the normal correct answer feedback bubble, right? So I just use the correct answer feedback bubble that comes normally with a multiple choice question. Second answer, same thing. It's an incorrect answer, right? But I've not enabled the advanced answer. So I can mix and match these on the same slide. Now I put these here in this layout so that you could see easily that these are the ones that are the normal default uh, correct and incorrect and and uh, prompt for response that Captivate provides normally, but um, there's there's no reason why you can't lay them out you know anywhere you want on the screen with whatever kind of a flavor you want. I also thought it would be interesting to have sort of a not exactly right because gas tanks, oxygen tanks, helium tanks, these are kind of you know almost answers. So here we get to this one, helium tanks. I did enable the advanced answer option. I do short the feedback message, and here I use that same kind of not exactly. Uh, feedback as I use for oxygen tanks using the default system. Um, in this case, with the the not exactly what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to say, okay, well, almost you almost got the right answer, but not quite. It's not quite a perfect answer. So I'm giving the user some feedback about that answer, but not giving them you know like complete feedback about that answer. So um, then with fish tanks I went ahead and chose incorrect because obviously fish tanks and army tanks these are you know completely incorrect answers so you can get more variety you can give all kinds of feedback you can give the user more information about what you want you can also even use it as an additional or supplemental teaching opportunity um, and it's a great easy smooth way to do it let's just uh, look at what happens when I put in a question slide and make sure that you know exactly how to do it remember only works with multiple choice questions uh, I'll click OK and then insert that question slide. So now I've got a new default multiple choice question that I've inserted into the space. You can see that that new default question comes with its correct and incorrect as well as its um, as well as it's you know you're required to go on right but I could disable those if I wanted to right so I, I then would be left with nothing but the incorrect response if that incorrect response that incorrect response will never be called in the event that I choose to use the advance for both of these, right? So in the case that I were to say, okay, well, I want to go to the advanced properties for this one and set this to the advanced answer option. And I'm going to have this one go to the next slide in the event that it's uh, there because it's a correct answer. And I'm going to have it show a feedback message, okay? And then on this one, I'm going to do something similar, but I'm going to have it do no action and I'm going to show a feedback message. So you can see I get the default Captivate text captions there. You may have noticed here this multiple choice is not in the same position. I can use my advanced styles to simply ch uh, select the one that is right, go to the position and size tab, and then apply that to all items of the same style. Automatically then my new slide will put that multiple choice in the position that I want it to be in. Now you've got to find that that little incorrect answer is still hanging out there on the slide. No need to worry about it. You can drag it off screen if you want. It's never going to show up because now at this point I have um, I haven't given it any opportunity to show up because now it is only going to show these two feedback messages. If I want to somehow customize those feedback messages, I'm perfectly free to do so. Um, let's say, for example, I wanted to make them transparent. Okay, well then I'll just choose the transparent caption option and I'll change their little text color to like a gray color and voila, I've got the ability to do that, right? So if I wanted to ask a question like um, the sky is blue and I wanted that to be a true or false question, I could simply use the multiple choice format to get a true or false result because of course I have two answers by default and of course you know that you can set the number of answers that you want in the quiz properties so you can change that from two to some other kind of thing you can also use multiple answers doesn't really matter okay and then here I could put my feedback and uh, that feedback could say whatever I want like uh, aren't you observant and this one could say uh, no, 
look again something like that right so now we've created our additional multiple choice question it's got its custom feedback we're able to go through if we wanted to we could even uh, take a look at this project starting on this slide and we take a quick look at that and we're going to see that we've got sky is blue true or false we're then able to make a determination uh let's say the sky is false uh sky is blue false so we submit the answer uh no look again we click again um and then we're gonna uh, that's an interesting uh, uh paradox there right because now we're on the sky is blue question right we've submitted the answer but we haven't really given ourselves an exit so to fix that, we have to come back in here to the question itself and take a look at what happens when we select false. When we select true, automatically we go to the next slide. But when we select false, we selected no action. That means that in the event that we select false, nothing's going to happen. Now this is handy in the previous question, this one here, because we don't want to go anywhere when we select the wrong answer because we're set to infinite attempts. But in this case, we actually want false to result in moving forward to the grade summary. So to fix that, we'll change no action to go to the next slide. That'll move us directly to the next slide. Uh, that way we don't have to sit there forever waiting around. So if we just preview that last bit, uh, we'll see now that that uh, works as we would expect. We'll pull up the question, we'll answer false, and then we'll click submit. Oh no, look again. Then when we click on the screen just as usual, we'll get back to that summary slide. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about how to do advanced feedback in Captivate 5.